I think what I want to do first is just to give you a general overview of how things work, and then I'll go into the details of, of how the schematic actually worked out. So the idea is to basically um, drive this high voltage flyback transformer in such a way to produce a musical note. Now, um, I want to kind of work backwards from the flyback to the input. So this flyback is driven by this N-channel MOSFET, which is a IRF P260N N-channel MOSFET, uh, which is then triggered by this 555 timer board. And the 555 timer board is then triggered by um, the combination of the N-channel MOSFET we have on this board and the amplifier here, which is a LM358N uh, operational amplifier. It's acting as just a, a pre-amplifier for the input signal, which is then triggering this jelly bean N-channel MOSFET, which is then triggering the uh, operation of, of this uh, 555 timer chip, which is then triggering um, another N-channel MOSFET um, but a more heavy-duty MOSFET that then triggers this uh, flyback transformer. It's just a, a big uh, series of switches and triggers just to get to your end result, which results in a you know, musical note being played. One important thing to mention about this circuit as a whole is that it has two different configurations that you can choose from. Um, and so I made that available to myself because I didn't want to limit myself with one power supply. So I basically made it in such a way to give me the option of running two separate power supplies or hooking up everything in for one power supply. So obviously um, these leads here correspond to the positive and negative of the low voltage electronics. And right here where the capacitor is connected to corresponds uh, basically to all the high voltage stuff which is um, driving the end channel MOSFET here and the flyback and um, you can choose to connect both of these together and, and I have made sure that there are um, proper safety precautions in place to make sure that you know, all the um, inductive kickback from the flyback is being you know, accounted for in the low voltage electronics so you can't harm the low voltage electronics by connecting every, everything together. Um, but if you, if you choose so, you can actually um, connect one power supply to these leads and one power supply over here, enabling you to essentially um, drive the flyback at a much higher voltage and current um, and getting more powerful arcs, longer arcs. So the circuit that I made was originally supposed to be this, which is a schematic I got off of Franzoli's website. I hope I'm saying that correctly. He does a lot of stuff with high voltage and Tesla coils, so I encourage you to follow him if you're interested in that. He's a cool dude. Um, and he put out this schematic, which is an easy flyback driver, and I got really interested in this. However, I had a lot of trouble with one part of the schematic, namely the, the zero cross detector. As you can see by my handwriting, um, I, I wanted to get this thing working desperately, but you know, this, this comparator is a bit tricky to understand for me. I mean, full disclosure, I'm, I'm just an amateur uh, when it comes to electronics, and usually I can get things working and usually I can understand things, but this comparator configuration was really hard to understand for me. I understand that it's biased um, in order to trigger at both the positive and negative ends of, this, of the signal. That I get, but I just don't understand the step-by-step -step operation of, of how this is supposed to work. I, I guess maybe I just didn't wire something correctly, but this comparator uh, never seemed to work correctly for me, so I gave up on this and basically did my own thing. You'll see that in my schematic. So this is my schematic that I just figured out on my own. Um, and a lot of this is taken from the previous schematic I showed you from Franzoli. However, I did change up some things and I'll go over that. So let's start with the oscillator because obviously the oscillator is what, what basically drives the flyback and um, it's configured typically at like 22 or 25 kilohertz um, and that is above the hearing range of a human. 
And that's important because you don't want any additional distortion to be in the musical note that you're trying to play. So inherently, you, you want the natural running frequency of the transformer to be as silent as possible, um, meaning out of the range of human hearing. So this area of the schematic with the 555 timer doesn't change much from Franzoli's schematic. So I'm, I'm not gonna talk too much about that, but I just want you to notice that there are two lines coming from this section. Uh, one of them being the reset pin from the 555 timer. That's really important. That goes to the interrupter. Another line that goes straight out here, this is the output of the oscillator itself, which of course goes to the MOSFET that drives the flyback. So let's start off by going over the flyback driver because that's pretty simple to explain as a whole. So the oscillator signal, the oscillator output, immediately comes in here and is greeted by a Zener diode. All this makes sure of is that the voltage on this gate, on this line, does not exceed 12 to 18 volts, um, depending on what kind of Zener you put here. And this signal, or output, goes into the gate of the uh, MOSFET and triggers it. This capacitor over here, uh, on the flyback side of things, uh, this capacitor has to do with the resonance or um, the tuning of, of this coil. Um, I, I doubt my circuit is in tune at all, and I still have yet to tune it, but um, you should measure the inductance um, of just like the amount of coils that you, you put on here, and then you can determine what kind of capacitor you should put here in order to um, have everything in resonance and tune this circuit properly. Um, and that would enable you to get the maximum power output from your arcs and have longer arcs, have like stronger arcs. But um, really that's not a big concern of mine, so I think my circuit is a little out of tune. But in any case, this capacitor is just to be in tune with the inductance of this coil. Uh, that's what it's there for. You go down here and you see a bunch of diodes and you see another capacitor. So these two diodes are for protection um, as well as this capacitor. Um, and so this diode prevents um, the negative kickback from the inductive coil from you know, affecting the MOSFET. And then this Zener um, makes sure that the line does not exceed 12 to 24 volts. And this is a uh, decoupling cap that just eases the high voltage transients. This electrolytic capacitor over here um, actually does a good job of stabilizing the current draw from this circuit and um, stabilizes the arc somewhat. So coming here to the interrupter now, we see that this N-channel MOSFET is actually triggering the reset pin on the 555 timer we have. And how this reset pin is triggered um, is really important because, I mean, this is what is turning the flyback on and off repetitively to make a musical tone. So you have to make sure you, you do this right. And the way I did it, because I couldn't figure out really the, the comparator that was in Franzoli's schematic, the way I did it here is just with a simple N-channel MOSFET. Um, I'm getting, so first of all, the, the reset pin, what it requires is a voltage higher than I believe 0.7 volts in order to turn on the 555 timer. And so I have a resistor divider here configured in such a way to provide um, a voltage just below the trigger level of this reset pin. And then when I finally do trigger this N-channel MOSFET uh, from the, the operational amplifier that is down here, then the, the path over to ground is, has less resistance than this biasing resistor. And so immediately it becomes way more positive on this line triggering the reset pin. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, I believe that's what's happening here. 
maybe maybe somebody else has a better explanation of that, but um, that's basically what I came up with uh, to trigger the reset pin, and it works quite well. The only thing you might need to adjust on here is the biasing resistor. Um, I have a just a regular resistor on here, but you may want to put a potentiometer in order to just adjust the, the, the biasing correctly un until the, the trigger level is set correctly. So coming over to the amplifier stage, we can see there's a, a bunch going on. The first thing I want to mention is that in this chip, there are two operational amplifiers. And I'm only using one side of this chip. I'm only using one amplifier here, meaning my circuit that I made is monophonic. And that means that it can basically just play one note or one tone at a time. And if you so wanted to, you could utilize the other side of this chip here, um, the other operational amplifier, and make yourself a stereo system. So that would mean two independently driven flybacks that would play music. So I, I think that's uh, for another video, but that, that's definitely a, a something you can do with this. And um, these resistors here set the gain or the amplification factor of the signal coming in. Um, so the signal coming in, I knew from the get-go, was you know between 50 millivolts to 100 millivolts. Um, and that is just one side um, of the signal. So, you know, obviously music is a sinusoidal wave, so you have a positive side and you have a negative side to that wave. So uh, what I'm saying is that um, the peaks uh, from zero go to, you know, 50 to 100. And that is what I kept in mind when choosing the values of these resistors, setting the um, amplifier gain or amplification factor. Now, you, you can probably tell that there's a lot of things going on right here at the input. Um, and some of this may not even be necessary, but it's in my circuit because, you know, I like to play it safe. <laughs> so, um, so first of all, some amplifiers, some cheaply made amplifiers, you'll find, have a DC bias to them for whatever reason. And you have to filter that out with this uh, DC blocking capacitor right at the input. Now that will block some of your current as well. So I reintroduced um, some of that DC biased with this resistor. However, that's, that's optional. Um, just a small note though, uh, the reason why I want to introduce a little bit more DC biased into the signal is purely because I want the arc at the flyback to be stronger and better performing in general. Um, and that's the only reason why you would want, you know, more of a DC biased over here to have the signal spend more time being on than off. Now I have some zeners here that are just for protection, making sure that on this line the voltage cannot exceed one to two volts. Then I have these decoupling capacitors, which I cannot stress enough how important they are for the correct um, functionality of the circuit. Um, there is a 10 nanofarad one and a 100 nanofarad one right here beside each other, and they do a great job of filtering out the very short but high voltage transients that can end up here at the input. And I have measured this with a oscilloscope, so, so that's how I know. Uh, those high voltage transients can, and can end up on this line if you do connect everything on the schematic to one power supply. So, so those help. And also on this line you'll see a pull down resistor. And that is just to make sure that the line is pulled down. Um, and yeah, that's it, just to stabilize it a little more. And I think that's it. I mean, that goes over everything here. So you also may be wondering what software I'm using to control all of this. And this is a flavor of Ubuntu Linux called uh, Ubuntu Studio. And built right into it, 
is a bunch of audio production software, uh, one of them being LMMS. It's a music sequencer and synthesizer. It's uh, very comparable to uh, Fruity Loops, if you have experience with that. And uh, right away when you open it up, it allows you to just mess with the frequency of notes and different wave functions and just like a whole bunch of stuff. And you know, you, you click right in the box and you can create your own notes as you see fit. It is so cool to just mess around in this software. Um, and I'm glad it's free. I mean, this is, this is amazing software that you can just put on any computer, any laptop and off you go. So this laptop was given to me. I don't really care what happens to it. And consequently, I did fry the output jack on this motherboard because I was being stupid. Um, so if you're like me and you fry things, it's good to know, um, you know, backup options. And so that's why I bought a guy like this uh, to plug into the USB drive of the computer and have audio jacks available to me. And that way, you don't have to really worry too much about, you know, frying these things because I believe these are just two bucks on Amazon. And, you know, two bucks is easily more cost effective than frying the whole computer.